everyone. Welcome to episode number 595 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. This week, my friends, we are living on the edge or computing on the edge, as the case may be. My guest is Chad Lucian from SIVA. Chad and I are talking all about the future of Edge AI, the advantages of TinyML, and SIVA's new pro NPUs. Chad and I also talk about the motivation to create SIVA's new NuPro Nano NPU, the details of the architecture of this new NPU family, the benefits that their AI SDK brings to the table, and why TinyML dedicated hardware is more important now than ever before. So without further ado, please welcome Chad to Fish Fry. Hi, Chad. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Really appreciate you making the time for me. Absolutely. Okay, so first off, for my audience who may not know, talk to me about SIVA and what you guys are all about. Absolutely. Love to. SIVA is a very well-established, publicly traded silicon IP and software licensing company. Where companies traded on the NASDAQ. I've got about $100 million of revenue. Our customers have shipped more than 17 billion devices with our IP in them over the past 20 years. So this is a, you know, like I say, very well established business. We have about 450 people globally. Companies headquartered here in Rockville, Maryland, which is where I'm based. And uh, we've got R&D centers and sales offices all around the world. From a product standpoint, the focus is really on bringing innovation to the smart edge through three pillars of the portfolio. We have wireless communication IP, where SIVA is the number one licensor globally of its portfolio that spans Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, ultra wideband, and 5G technologies. In that domain, we're powering about a billion devices a year. And then we have an Edge AI sensing IP portfolio for Edge AI, which has powered about 500 million devices to date. And then the third pillar here is the application software, which is embedded software that enables us to provide solutions directly to OEMs, whereas you know the Edge AI and wireless IP is primarily licensed to semiconductor companies. Excellent. Now, you guys recently extended your SIVA New Pro family of NPUs with the introduction of the SIVA New Pro Nano. But first, let's back up a second and talk to me about the SIVA New Pro family of NPUs and the motivation behind the creation of this solution. That is right. SIVA New Pro is the brand of our Edge AI NPU family. And that family spans from a small but powerful New Pro Nano, which we're going to talk more about, that delivers, you know, tens to a couple hundred gops of compute for embedded very edge AI inferencing all the way up to the new pro M, which scales to deliver up to 2000 tops and is focused really more on generative AI applications at the edge. The motivation behind the new pro family is, is really kind of three parts. One, we see a huge opportunity in edge AI. I think that's not a unique conclusion. We also see that many companies are developing portfolio of AI products. So, right, we're mainly licensing to the semiconductor companies, and it's necessary for us to have a scalable product family to enable our customers to basically deliver a portfolio that addresses the segments that are important to them from tiny ML up to generative AI type of devices. And then thirdly, edge AI devices all really require connectivity. And, you know, given our market position in connectivity, it's a place where we have a particularly strong market advantage and we can leverage the relationships that we already have in the IP licensing you know, marketplace and our know-how in the wireless space. Now, with respect to NuPro Nano, uh, this is the NPU that we announced on Monday. That product is specifically designed to focus on the always-on low-power use cases targeted towards small form factor devices that are found at the very edge of the network, which means that inferencing is happening right on the sensor or right next to the sensor. 
in this particular place, we see huge opportunity here because MCU companies, sensor companies, Bluetooth audio SOC companies, and other you know special purpose SOC solutions all need to deliver products with embedded AI inferencing to really meet the you know continued growth and market demands. So this is what we're focused on today and, and what we're excited to talk about. Excellent. Now, among a host of other benefits, your new Siva New Pro Nano NPUs are tiny ML optimized. So talk to me a little bit about tiny ML. You know, I talked about embedded inferencing at the very edge of the network. That's basically what I mean when I say tiny ML, right? Tiny ML is a segment of machine learning where the models are small enough to run on very resource constrained chips that can go into low power, you know, always on devices and enable a whole wide range of use cases across, you know, voice uh, sensing and vision, for example. The market in ABI has done, published some research specifically on tiny ML infrared chips. And the forecast there is 4 billion tiny ML inference chips shipping annually in 2028 and growing, you know, pretty quickly, you know, over 30% annual growth. And one of the other interesting conclusions is that these tiny ML shipments are going to be powered more and more by dedicated tiny ML hardware rather than general purpose MCUs or DSPs that are often used today, just being repurposed. Whereas now that the OEMs specifically are looking to basically add more and more capability into their end user devices, they're running out of compute to do everything that they need to do. And that's why these dedicated chips are necessary. Really tiny ML to just kind of put a little bit of a box around what tiny ML means from a technical perspective. We're talking about very small memory footprints, right? These are single digit megabytes of flash or ROM model sizes that you know could range from tens of K to you know a few megabytes for the model parameters, very low power, mainly single digit milliwatts or even less, and compute in that, I think I mentioned earlier, tens of GOPs to hundreds of GOPs range. So it's really to efficiently address these technical constraints and the tiny ML use cases, we needed to develop this new NPU to deliver a balance of power and performance together in a small area to meet all of these challenging cost and power targets. So let's discuss the features of your new NPU family, which includes a flexible and scalable NPU architecture, right? Yeah, that's correct. So we designed the new Pro Nano to be a highly efficient and self-sufficient edge NPU, which is designed specifically for tiny ML. And what I mean by self-sufficient is really important for one. Nano is not an accelerator. It does not require a CPU or a DSP to operate. It actually includes all of the processing elements of a standalone MPU, including the code execution and the memory management. It's a fully programmable design that allows you to efficiently execute the whole application. So everything from the feature extraction all the way up to processing the neural network itself, together with any other heavy lifting of computational functions like DSP code or audio code or control code can also run in this device. A couple of other things that are important to mention here, from a scalability standpoint, the performance is scalable due to a broad set of Mac configurations that scales on up to 64 eight by eight Macs. We have native 128 of four by eight Macs per cycle. And the architecture itself is designed to be as future-proof as possible, right? To support the current machine learning data types and operators and the ones that we envision coming over the next, you know, several years. So we, you know, have 4-bit to 32-bit integer support. We've got native transformer computation support. These capabilities will help us to adapt as new networks and new applications come to light and our customers, you know, have a need to deploy those. A couple other things I'll mention regarding the the architecture and the feature set are that we have a number of other features to really accelerate performance, reduce memory, and reduce energy. From a performance perspective, you know, things like sparsity acceleration, 
where we're accelerating, you know, sparse model inference. We have other acceleration of things like nonlinear activation types, and we have a methodology for fast quantization that allows us to accelerate internal requantizing tasks up to five times. We've also implemented an interesting AI compression technology that we call SIVA NetSqueeze. This delivers up to 80% memory footprint reduction by directly processing the compressed model weights without the need for an intermediate decompression stage, which means we can feed the compressed model weights directly into the neural processing unit without decompressing them and consuming the memory buffers. And then lastly, on the energy side of things, uh, we've implemented several nice features to reduce energy consumption, one of which is that we can dynamically scale the voltage and the frequency based on the use case or the particular model that is being run in real time. You know, that's an important feature to ensure that these devices can live for a long time on just battery power. So what kind of applications do you think this NPU family would be a good fit for? It opens up a lot of opportunities for companies to integrate tiny ML applications into low power IoT SOCs and MCUs, correct? That's absolutely right. There's really four key application or use case domains that we see. And they cover voice, vision, predictive maintenance, and health and fitness sensing. So, you know, on the voice front, there are things like keyword spotting, you know, detecting keywords and commands through voice, voice biometrics, environmental noise cancellation solutions. On the vision front, there are more and more tiny ML, you know, enabled vision applications and networks that are on the market today. And we see a lot more innovation happening here with, you know, object classification or image classification, being able to detect when a human being walks up to a device. There's a something called the visual wake word, which is basically detecting that there's a face there, not necessarily detecting it's my face or your face, but detecting that there is a face to enable to trigger a function or, or turn on the full system. From a predictive maintenance standpoint, we're talking about looking at vibration and temperature, humidity, and even sound sensing to understand the health of a device and when there's some anomaly that we may be able to detect. And then on the health and fitness side of things, a lot of applications around tracking your physical activity and your vital signs. So you can imagine that end user devices are pretty broad, right? We're talking about hearables, we're talking about wearables, AR glasses, smart home equipment, as well as your home audio equipment, and then even things that are in the factory or smart agriculture type of devices as well that have sensors attached to them and need to be able to constantly understand what's going on in the field. So these NPUs are also delivered with a complete AI SDK, right? Tell me about that. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things we continuously hear from the market, you know, both semiconductor companies as well as the OEMs is that software tools for developing and deploying AI products is a real pain point. It's complicated. And then while many of these companies like the MCU guys out there are becoming more and more proficient in software, AI is adding a whole extra layer of complexity on top of that. So we're working to address this by providing the new pro studio, which is an AI SDK that can be used across the new pro product family. So for those customers of ours that may be looking at different cores, different products within our new pro family, they can use one software environment to profile, to optimize networks, and to actually implement software on the dedicated cores. We are very specifically leveraging open source wherever we can. We're not focused on becoming the AI software company. We're focused on making it easier for our customers and our customers' customers to utilize our tools. So we want to use what people are used to using. So for example, from an inferencing perspective, the new Pro Studio is built around TVM and TensorFlow. For new Pro Nano, we're specifically focused on TensorFlow Lite Micro and Micro TVM. Those frameworks are fully integrated into the solution. And then we provide a pre-optimized portfolio of models, which is our model zoo, which basically contains a bunch of open source models from TinyMLPerf or other open source repositories, as well as some SIVA proprietary ones. 
so our customers can very quickly evaluate and assess the performance of those models running on the new Pro Nano uh, and can make those available to their customers as well, all pre-optimized. Clearly, this is a proprietary NPU architecture, so we do provide the software and the tools necessary to utilize all of the proprietary aspects of the uh, new Pro product family. And then in addition to that, we have a you know, pre-integrated third-party software library. So, you know, for example, because of our long history in the audio DSP world, we have many audio codecs and audio and voice and sensor fusion application software from our own portfolio and from third parties that we can run you know, out of the box on the new Pro Nano. We found that this has become really essential to the overall product because but many of the larger chip companies are focused on, they're not focused on a point product. They're not going to launch one you know, chip with AI capabilities. They're going to launch a portfolio that has a range of AI capabilities. It's important for us to have this full range of NPUs across the new pro line and also make it easy for those customers to leverage multiple cores without having to move from one software infrastructure to another. That makes sense. All right. It's time for your off the cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? I always say that my one meal would be a very big helping of Texas barbecue. Nice. Always a favorite. And I know I won't be hungry by the end of it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That is a very good choice. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you, Chad. Thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you, Amelia. Really appreciate it. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon on too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our brand new animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of August 16th, 2024, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs>